Today, we're creating an advanced countdown inside of After Effects. Hey guys, what's up, it's Bravity, and welcome back to another video here on my channel. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. So today we're taking a look at another tutorial slash template inside of After Effects. And this is for a fairly advanced countdown for your OBS, for your stream. So you can have a bit more of a personalized and advanced countdown than just basic numbers counting it down. So I am going to provide a template for this if you just want to take it and run and not learn anything, but I am going to show you guys exactly how I built this. So just in case you want to take it and make it a bit more personalized, we're going to do that. But before we get started, I just wanted to say that I try to stream every Tuesday and Sunday over on Twitch. So make sure you're following me on twitch.tv forward slash Bravity M. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump inside of After Effects and take a look at this tutorial. All right, guys. So here we are inside of a blank After Effects project. If you open up your After Effects right now to follow along, this is what you are going to see if you hit new project and all we're going to do is we're going to hit new composition and just create a new one 60 frames per second fine full hd and just hit okay next what we're going to do is come up to the text tool here and just type out like timer i'm gonna do all caps just because i think it looks cooler but we're gonna do all caps timer just like that maybe move the anchor point into the center and then go ahead and align ourselves right in the center of the comp just like that so real quick we're just going to create a basic timer using an expression so what you want to do is head over to your effects and type in slider so you're going to see under expression controls there's an effect called slider control just drop that onto your timer then down here in your comp where it says timer just go ahead and drop the drop down head to text source text and on this stopwatch you just want to hold down alt on your keyboard and then click it and it'll open up the expression controls you then just want to grab the little pick whip tool the expression pick whip it's a little squiggly line click hold and drag it to the slider control up here where it says slider underneath this is inside of your effects controls of your timer layer so make sure you're in effects controls up here drag it to slider and you have now connected it to your slider. So real quick guys, I just wanted to jump in here and say that later on in the tutorial, we're gonna be doing some expressions and coding to create the actual timer counting down. And before you can do that, and before you can even copy what's below in the description and paste it in After Effects, you need to make sure in your After Effects, you go up to file and project settings down here at the bottom, and then go over here to expressions and make sure this is on legacy extend script. This is the old coding and extended, um, uh, expression tools inside of After Effects. You cannot do this inside of JavaScript. If you have it on JavaScript and you try to paste this code and expression in, it's going to break. It's not going to work right. So make sure you're on legacy, extend script, hit OK, and then you can further the tutorial and begin working on the timer. Next, what you're gonna do is all the expression and coding, but you guys don't have to do this at all because you can just copy it from down in the description. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take all this that it created and just select it and delete it, and then just copy what I provided down in the description and paste it into here. Make sure there's no extra spaces or lines or anything. Just copy everything that I put down in the description and paste it, so just like that so now we have pasted everything in there and as you can see it has created a timer just like that so now when we move this slider control up here you see it adds time to the timer and as we take it back down to zero it takes time away so now what you're going to do is decide how long you want your timer to be so i want my timers normally to be around five minutes so we're going to go up to composition composition settings and we want to make sure we make this at least five minutes a little bit faster or a little bit longer than five minutes so five minutes and 30 seconds is what i'm going to do for duration so there we go hit okay and then we can go ahead and zoom out and see our full five minutes here so we're going to start our playhead here at zero make sure our clip lasts the entirety of the five minutes so just drag this out start our playhead at zero and hit this stopwatch next to the slider control but we need to set this to five minutes first so make sure you go up set it to five minutes which i think is like 300 is 300 five minutes? Yeah, so I'm gonna set it to 300. This is just based on seconds. So 300 seconds is five minutes. So 300, we're gonna go ahead and hit the stopwatch next to the slider. We're gonna go forward to zero or to five minutes. So right about, let's go frame by frame here. As you can see, it's counting down over here and boom, five minutes exactly. We're now gonna take this and set it to zero. So we've just keyframed it from 300 seconds to zero over the course of the five minutes of the composition. So now, as you can see, as we hit play, it's going to count down one second at a time. So here is your basic countdown. If you just wanna have a basic countdown, there you go. You are completely done. And that it's, it's on an alpha background. You can render that out, put it wherever you want. That's how you create a countdown. But we wanna make it look a little bit more advanced. So what a lot of people do is they just have a basic countdown. So when we get into the seconds here, as you can see, the minute is still showing zero. 
and you see the colon. I don't like that. I like to just have the seconds be visible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to one minute and we're gonna go frame by frame and right before it cuts to be 59 seconds. So let's go ahead and go forward. So right here where it jumps down to 59, you're gonna get to the first frame where it says 59. You're gonna make sure you select your timer down here and you're gonna hit Command or Control Shift D depending on if you're on a Mac or a Windows. On, on Windows it's Command or Control Shift D. So you're just gonna select this one that's now on the 59 seconds. You're gonna close this drop down, go into this drop down on just the seconds, go to text, source text, hit the drop down, and on your expression down here, you're gonna see at the very bottom, this is where we lay out what your timer is going to look like. You see it's the minutes, you got a colon, you got the zero in front of the seconds, and then you got the seconds. So what we wanna do is everything before this add zero right here, we're just going to delete it. So we don't want the colon and we don't want the minutes anymore. So just from here on, just this minute, and the plus and the colon and the other plus before the add zero, delete that, and then just go ahead and select out of it and close your timer now. And as you can see, it gets rid of the colon and all the minute stuff. So now when we cut to just being seconds, you see it goes to just that. I prefer that. I think that looks quite a bit more cleaner than just having the zero be left over and the colon left over. So that's already a bit of a custom timer that a lot of people like to see the cleanliness and the minimalist look of your timer, but we're gonna make it even more advanced. So we're gonna go down to like five seconds right before it starts. And right when it's about to select to five, so we're gonna go forward, go forward, and the first frame it's about to change to five, right? there we are just going to command shift d or control shift d again and delete it so we want it to just cut to black because we're going to create our own custom timer after that to make it look kind of crazy so here we go we're at five seconds we're at nine eight seven six and nothing so now we need to create our custom text so what we're going to do is we're going to create a five whoops held down shift we're going to create a five Go ahead and move the anchor point again, just like that. There we go. Go ahead and align it up. Use our align tools down here to just get it in the center. And now what we wanna do is we just wanna duplicate that and make our four. And I'm duplicating it by hitting Control D, so duplicate it again and make our three. Duplicate the three and make our two. And then duplicate the two and make our one. So now we've got five, four, three, two, one. So now what we need to do is we just need to right click on five, go to create shapes from text. Then you can delete the five text layer. We just, wanna, we just want the five outlines. Then four, go to create, create shapes from text, delete the four, three, create shapes from text, delete the three, just keep the outline. And then same for two, create, Delete the two, one, create shapes from text, and delete the one, just leave the outline. So now we've got all these outlines here that has just pretty much created a mask around our numbers. So now what we wanna do is we wanna go up to layer and create a new solid, make it a nice white solid, kinda of like our timer is now. And now with this white solid, you wanna white, right click on the white solid down here, go up to masks and create a new mask, just like that. So now here's where it's gonna get a little bit confusing. So. What you wanna do is you wanna to go to the five outline, you wanna hit the drop down, and then where it says contents, you wanna hit the drop down again, it's gonna say five, you wanna hit the drop down again, and you'll see another five, hit the drop down again. This path is what you need right here. You just need to click on path and hit command or control C to copy it, close that, and then head up to our white solid, hit the drop down where it says masks, hit the drop down, mask one, hit the drop down, and then where it says mask path, you just wanna click on that, select it, and then hit control or command V, and it is going to paste that path data from the five to your mask on your white solid. So then you can just delete the five outline. So now we got the white solid, and here's where the complex part starts. So as you can see, we've got our clip where it ends at six seconds right here. So let's go ahead and hide all this stuff that we just created, leave it just to our timers again. So you'll see we're about to hit to five seconds where the six disappears. So right here, you want to turn on your white solid and you just want to hit the stopwatch next to mask path. And now we need this five to last for one second because we're creating our own countdown before this needs to transform into the four. So now we've got it at right when it needs to turn change to five seconds. And now we need to go for 60 frames because that's gonna be one second. So make sure you know what composition you're working in. So if we're working in a 60 frames per second composition, you need to go forward 60 frames and then we'll get one second. So you can hold down shift and then hit page down 
page up and page down will go forward by one frame, but if you hold shift and hit page up and page down, you'll go forward and back by 10 frames. So I'm gonna hold down shift and hit page down six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And that is one second exactly. We can now hit the little keyframe button over here by our mass path, and that'll create a keyframe. So now we just have this five, lasting the entirety of the five second mark. Now we just wanna go forward half a second because we want the animation from the five to the four to last half a second. So I'm gonna go forward only three times to so hold down shift, page down, one, two, three. So that's 30 frames, half a second, and now it's time to add our next keyframe. So we wanna to go to the four outline here, drop down the arrow, drop down the contents, drop down into four, drop down into four, grab the path, Control C, close that up, and then go up to this path, the mass path, and hit Control V. We've now pasted the path half a second, and you'll see that it takes half a second to transform into the four. Looks fantastic. So now we go forward half a second again because we need to make sure that we are making these animations only last a second to make sure the timer stays perfect. So we've got one second for the five, then we take a half a second to the, do the animation so the four can only be on screen for a half a second. So now we're gonna hold down shift, go one, two, three, hit the little keyframe again right here next to the path. And then we've got the four lasting for a while. So we got five into four, lasts for half a second, and now it's time to animate to the three. So we're gonna go forward three more, hold down shift, page down, one, two, three. And now it's time to paste the three outline. So we can delete the four, head down into the contents of three, copy the path data, control C, head back up to this path and control V, paste the three, and now we've got it animating to a three. Now the three can stay on screen for half a second, so hold down shift, one, two, three, 30 frames, and then we just hit the little keyframe thing once again. We've got the three hanging on the screen for half a second, and now we do the same thing with two, one, two, three, 30 frames forward, delete the three, head down into the drop down, contents, two, two, path, control C, head back up to the path, control V, we've now pasted the two, so you see the two transforms, 30 frames forward, shift, page down, page down, page down, then we hit the keyframe, we've got the two on screen, then 30 more frames, one, two, three, delete the two, head down to the one, contents, one, one, last one, path, control C, up to this path, control V, and there we go, we are done. You can delete the one outline, and that is your timer complete. So you can see after your one second ends, we're gonna hold down shift, go forward six times, one, two, three, four, five, six, and you'll see we've ended just one frame over, but pretty much right at five minutes. You can cut this off, you can add a zero if you want. I just have it go to black because the stream then starts. So we can now zoom in here and make sure that this five starts right after that six timer disappears. So make sure we go forward, then command shift D, delete everything behind it. So now we've got this six ending and then the five begins. Now you might need to mess around with the sizing and whatnot of this comp. I normally like to maybe move my uh, anchor point right into the center here. And I like to make my ending numbers a bit bigger and just kind of right in the center. So you notice like this big noticeable change when it switches from six to five, just like that. So now what we've got is we've got this basic timer counting all the way down from five minutes, blah, 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 blah. When it gets to the seconds, we have that thing where the colon disappears, looks really cool. And if you wanted to do the seconds to where this zero disappears when you get to single digits, we can do the same thing that we did for the minutes. So right when we're about to switch to this nine here, Let's go ahead and go forward a couple frames on this first nine frame. Let's go ahead and uh, zoom out a little bit. Hit Command Shift D or Control Shift D to split the layer again. And you just want to select this middle layer, the next one. Hit the drop down, go into our text, our source text into the code right here again. And we can just delete where it says add zero next to the second. So let's go ahead and just delete that add zero just like that. And now you've got just a single digit when we get to the single digits. So. That's one thing to remember that you can do. So now we've got the timer changing its format all the way through. So now we've got our awesome minutes here. Then we switch to just two digits here. Then when we get into the single digits, we switch to just regular single digits, looking really good. And then when we get to five, we get bang, morph, morph, morph morph and that looks fantastic. But we have one more thing that's going to make this look 
and just dramatic and personalized and awesome. And that is by adding Saber to our timer. So we have to do this in kind of a special way because we've got so many layers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a layer, a new solid. We're gonna make it just a cool uh, blue solid just like that. Hit OK, and now we're going to add Saber to it. If you don't know what Saber is, I would definitely look it up. Look up some videos on Saber. I've explained it before in video, so I'm not going to explain it again, but it's pretty much just a plug-in from Video Copilot that makes cool lightsaber stuff, and you can apply it to just various layers and whatnot. So we've applied Saber to our Cyan Solid here, and then you just want to go to Customize Core. You want to select Saber, and you want to select a text layer, just like that. And then for the text layer, we want to select Timer. And as you can see, it has applied it to our timer, but it is just crazy bright right now. So we're going to change down our glow intensity a little bit, just like that. And you can see we've got this awesome looking saber timer like that. So then we can change this to energy if we want. Maybe turn down our glow intensity for this one a little bit. And we've got a crazy looking thing. We can change it to heat. Turn this down. we got fire looking countdown. But I'm just going to leave it at the default and then turn the intensity down a little bit because I think that looks really cool just like that. And you can change the color of it, maybe make it like a Sith lightsaber. There you go. We got a nice red timer. So now what we need to do is we need to start applying it to the other layers as we change it. So when we come to where this one switches to the single digit or the double digit numbers, we need to go ahead and cut our cyan solid by holding Command or Control Shift D at the same time. And on this one, we need to set the text layer to the timer two. So now we've got it switching to the one that's uh, the single digits or the double digits, just like that. Then we go forward to where it's gonna switch to single digits right here. Do the same thing with the cyan timer. Sh Control, Shift, D, cut it, select this one, select timer three. And now we've got our single digits just like that. And then right before we cut to our special numbers that morph, we're gonna go ahead and just cut off our saber or our cyan solid entirely because we have to do it in a little bit of a different way for this final one. So now we've got saber counting down all the way. The last one, we need to apply saber directly to our white solid that is morphing. So apply saber directly to that, go into customize core, and then in the core type under saber, just change it to layer masks, not text layer like we did, layer mask. And as you can see, we've got it looking just like the other ones. But now what we can do is we can go to the cyan solid and take a look at our settings and make sure they match. So it's on 16% intensity. So let's go ahead and copy that 16% right there. So we know it's gonna look the same, just like that. And then we can change the color to our red, just like that. So that is looking fantastic. And now take a look at this morphing. In the Saber, that morphing looks so freaking good. Oh my gosh. So I want to make me scale this up even more, just like that. I think that looks really cool, just like that. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. And then you could even change like the ending to be like a more dramatic Saber effect. Like, I don't know, let's do... What's Solar look like when we turn down the... Oh, there you go. So have it look like that. Maybe change it to your red still so it looks even crazier. So we've got just a basic, like, clean-looking saber counting down the whole time. And then it's boom, four, three, two playing a little bit slower because it's rendering it all but there you go guys that is how you do a really dramatic and advanced countdown inside of after effects so you've got a saber countdown counting all the way down when you get to your seconds you drop the colon and the minutes so it's nice and clean when you get to the single digits you drop that zero and then when you get to the final five seconds you've got this crazy morph effect going on and that is one of the most advanced timers you could probably do inside of After Effects. You can put this on top of any kind of countdown screen that you want, or you can turn on the alpha and export it to alpha, and then you can just put it on top of anything. If you do want to export it to alpha, make sure you're going into Saber and on the render settings, make sure you're changing the render settings from black down here to transparent. You're going to need to do this on all three of your cyan solid. So make sure you're doing that so you get this transparent layer just like that. But that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it got really advanced and there was a lot of stuff going on all at once, especially that morphing at the end when you morph between the stuff, copying the paths over and over. I know that can get crazy confusing, but if you just follow it step by step, pause it when you need to, slow it down if you need to to see where I'm clicking and what all I'm doing, and I promise you'll get an awesome effect like this. But if you don't want to put all the 
work into it and you don't want to learn how it's done completely just head down in the description you can download this exact project file that i just created right here but once again guys i hope you enjoyed the video and i will see you in the next one peace out